Okay, well, how about we get this show on the road here? Um, I'm Stephanie Torres. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm the Community Program Manager with the Drupal Association, and thank you so much for joining us for um, this event with Trellin, uh, Fundraising, Events, and Advocacy with Able Organizer, which is a Drupal distribution. Um, before, we, before I turn it over to Mike, I just want to do a little housekeeping so that you know how it will go today. So um, the first thing is, if you're listening from your computer, please uh, select the mic and speaker audio option, and please wear a headset. It can be um, a lot of feedback if folks aren't wearing headsets. Um, please remain muted during the call. And if you have a question, we have uh, that handy dandy little Q&A window. So uh, feel free to drop a question in there. Uh, what we'll probably do is hold questions until the end, but if you ask something that's pertinent to what Michael is speaking about, um, uh, I'll interrupt him and, and ask the question, so feel free to use that. And we also uh, encourage you and would love it if you could complete a post-webinar survey that you'll be receiving after this. Um, really helps us formulate what's next for webinars, so thanks so much for that. Uh, a little bit about the Drupal Association. Uh, we help with Drupal.org improvements. We actually are um, uh, have a whole tech team uh, that is being created now to help improve your user experience on Drupal.org. Uh, we also um, manage the Drupal.org hosting, make sure those servers are running. And many of you, I'm sure, have attended our Drupal cons. We have uh, one coming up in Austin in June, and another in Amsterdam in end of September. Community Grants is, uh, is another program we offer, and if you have a really great project and you need some funds to help kick it, kick it off, uh, we encourage you to apply for a community grant with us. And then we also offer Global Training Days. Uh, we coordinate this worldwide effort. Our next one is coming up on February 28th, and uh, we have trainers all over the world that offer uh, Drupal, a beginning intro to Drupal training uh, at, on the same day. So it's a, a really great way to introduce folks to uh, this fabulous community. Coming up, we have DrupalCon Austin, as I mentioned, and that is uh, June 2nd through the 6th in Austin, Texas. Uh, Global Training Days I mentioned, and our next webinar is going to be um, how to grow community and your training business with our Global Training Day, training day program. So we encourage you to uh, join us for that if you are interested in uh, becoming one of the trainers for this program. And uh, Trellin is a supporting partner with us, and uh, if you have interest, our supporting partners um, get a lot of benefits uh, and um, are really showing their commitment to the Drupal community. And if you're interested in knowing more, please uh, let us know. We would be happy to talk with you about that. And, and thank you, Trellin, for your support. All right, without further ado, today's speaker, uh, Michael Haggerty. Michael is the CEO and Chief Internet Strategist for um, Trellin, uh, and he's the ABLE Organizer Lead Architect. So, uh, Michael, I'm going to turn it over to you. That sounds nice, and thank you for the introduction, uh, Stephanie. You bet. Um, here today, we're going to talk a little bit about ABLE Organizer. Um, ABLE Organizer is an open source um, community engagement platform, uh, which Trellin has released. It's free. Uh, you know, to download, it's an install profile that that you can set up on on your local computer. But um, what I really hope to accomplish today, as we we talk through some of this, is you know, first off, I, I do want to show off this neat new distribution. Okay, I uh, talk through some of the features and and look at uh, uh, how the system works and and why it might be valuable to your organization. Uh, secondly, I do want to make a make an attempt. Um, to persuade everyone here that there's still a few new ways to think about Drupal and what you can do with it. Um, we all have this kind of notion about what Drupal is, um, 
everybody comes at the question from sort of different angles. Uh, what really I'm I'm hoping to do is to you know maybe push that dial over a degree or two, and you know just sort of bring people's awareness up around what what some of the tools are that are out there and and, and what some of the things are that uh, that you can you can accomplish. Uh, can we move to the next slide? So um, to start off with, I get a lot of questions about where Able Organizer came from, why it was built. Um, I wanted to take a couple of minutes uh, to start with background. Okay, um, the very first thing to understand is that one of the essential components of Able Organizer is a tool called CRM Core. It's a set of modules Trello started to work on uh, back in 2011. What we were looking to do is have a really robust yet lightweight um, set of modules for capturing contact information uh, within Drupal. What we did was we built a set of tools that, that really just captures contacts, activities, and relationships, and does absolutely nothing else. Okay, It's meant to be bloat-free and just you know, sort of a, uh, a framework that you can build other tools around. Uh, next slide, please. Um, part of the reason also that we did this is really just that we were all bought into the idea, you know, at least here at Trellon, of Drupal 7 as something that could be used as more than a content management system. Uh, with entities, the NCA API, all these other tools that were new and emerging, what we really wanted to do is kind of evaluate the system, um, you know, explore some areas for trying to use it in new and, and unique and interesting ways. Can we go to the next slide? Um, to give you a sense, um, after three years of investment and coding and pilot projects and very late nights supporting random people on the internet, um, we've finally gotten to the point where we have the stable and kind of mature platform for contact management. Um, growth, I would not say, has been fast. Okay, um, as of the other day, uh, or you know, I guess Monday, we had 487 installs of CRM Core um, going on. Trellon maybe could claim credit for 50 or 60 of those ourselves, okay, so that this is being used by other organizations. Um, that figure of 487, I think, is, is actually kind of interesting because when you think about what a CRM system is, the role that it plays in the life of an organization, I think that 487 figure is actually kind of kind of big, you know, considering Drupal is usually used as a contact management system, or sorry, a content management system, not for managing contacts, and, and, and CRM can be kind of vital to the life and health of an organization. Uh, that, that's actually kind of an impressive figure, you know, at least in terms of, of getting people to think about technology differently and, and, and use it in, in some new ways. So if we go to the next slide. Okay, really the big idea with CRM Core was not just to have a, mod, a set of modules that, that can manage contacts and, and activities and relationships. Really what the idea was is that it can act as a platform. Okay, what we wanted to accomplish is to have this nice set of tools for managing contacts and relationships and activities, but we also wanted to make sure that you could build small and useful applications on top of it um, that extend what you're able to do with with the platform in, in, in just kind of you know new and interesting ways. What we also wanted to do is make sure that the way that you built these tools uh, was portable. Um, that anything that's being built to extend CRM core really could be shared with the community. Uh, people could you know, constantly contribute to it, could innovate on top of it. Um, the the real goal for us was to, to kind of get there. So how about we, we go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of the problems that CRM Core specifically um, can solve, and, you know, by kind of thinking of it as a platform, um, some of the problems we look to impact are laid out here on this slide, um, you know, from... I, you know, I'd say probably the most important one is costs. Uh, there's a lot of organizations who could really benefit from having some data around who is getting in touch with them, how often they are servicing uh, people, 
what kind of communications are you know going going in and out. Um, at the same time, the tools that are available that could really kind of deliver some of this practical intelligence are are just out of reach of some of the organizations who would really really benefit. Um, I'm especially thinking about like small nonprofits, maybe with an operating budget you know, between three and five million. Um, I'm thinking about you know NGOs where you know maybe you're a division within a larger organization. Um, Data-driven practices could be key to you know really keeping your grants going and other things. So um, part of why we built CRM Core, part of what we're trying to hit with CRM Core is uh, just to have a solution that could you know it's simple to install, flexible, easy to use, and um, really can be you know delivered at a low price point. Uh, the second thing is ease of use. Um, one of the major challenges that organizations run into when they've integrated with a third-party CRM system is the fact that you know pages for accepting donations or registering for events might be hosted on a third-party website. Okay, the forms that they're using to ask for information are static. You can't really change them. Um, another issue we hear a lot about is the inability to access metrics around performance. Um, your actual reports are kind of only given to a, a small number of users um, with privileges in your organization. Uh, the people who actually run campaigns might not have access to that data. Um, in, in essence, you know, when you're running campaigns, you don't want to be running blind. You want to understand who's coming to uh, your site, who's actually engaging with your brand. If you can't do that, you know, there's there's a problem, and, and that's something CRM Core could be pretty useful in, in, in correcting. Um, finally, uh, data silos. Uh, this, I think, is the, the item that, that concerns me most. I spend a lot of time looking at commercial um, content management systems. Um, Crown Peak, uh, Site Life um, are just a couple that come to mind. And you know, one of the things that they really feature is integrated metrics around contacts and content. You know, you can figure out you know who is reading what articles based on where they came from. You can also publish personalized content um, for those users based on on their activity. Okay, um, part of the reason that it's hard to do that in Drupal is that there's not really a consolidated way to store intelligence about contacts um, who are in your site. And so CRM Core is really meant as a as a way to to deal with that as well. Next slide. Okay, so enter able organizer. <laughs> okay. Um, when Trellin built CRM Core, one of the things we, we also realized is just the fact that, that this is new and this is an idea that not a lot of people are, are going to be bought into or, or, or kind of familiar with. Uh, when we originally started working on Able Organizer, what we wanted to do was to, you know, by and large, uh, showcase the technology and features that are there and kind of kind of have this vision for technology that people could, could easily understand. Um, Secondly, what we really wanted to do, you know, with this distro is have that tool that can solve some of those goals, okay, that, that are, are listed above. Next slide. The way that we did this um, really was by organizing all the functionality around four key features. Um, I've been running Trillin for about 10 years. I've probably received, I don't know, six, 7,000 RFPs in that time. Um, I actually track the features that, that folks are are looking for, and so out of that sample of about 7,000 items, the ones that popped up the most frequently are, you know, strong, robust donation functionality, um, events, event registration, the ability to sell tickets for events, you know, all sorts of permutations of registration, um, petitions, okay, the ability to conduct outreach, the ability to, you know, maybe contact a legislator or uh, run a, a letter to the editor campaign. Um, and then also volunteers, uh, the ability to get people to sign up for something um, that you know doesn't necessarily involve a financial commitment, but definitely involves a time commitment, um, where maybe there's a limited number of slots and, and some other items. So uh, what we did with Enable Organizer is we built out you know all of these features in kind of a thoughtful and, and meaningful way that. Um, it could be used to serve a lot of the needs that you know have been expressed to us in, in RFPs through organizations we've talked to. Next slide. 
what else does it do, though? Okay, it's nice that we have all of these features. Okay, but features alone don't, you know, make a website. What really matters is what happens with the data um, when it gets in there. And what also really matters is how flexible it is. You know, what you can do with this system um, outside of just the the items that have already been defined for you. So. Um, CRM Core is part of Able Organizer. It allows you to configure new contact, activity, and relationship types. Um, let's say you're looking to track membership in your site. Um, it's pretty easy to create a, an activity just for membership, create some rules around it to control you know, when membership expires, create some reports on membership. Um, I'm going to show you the tools that, that we use in Able Organizer here in a few minutes, and I think for people with a little bit of experience with the Drupal platform, it's it's going to be pretty easy to, to visualize how you use it in that role. Um, the second thing that Able Organizer does is generates reports and allows you to visualize data. Um, we have a lot of widgets, like somewhere around 140 widgets that have been built out that um, exist in Able Organizer and just allow you to look at information in different ways. Uh, we're using panels and views in order to give us some, some additional leverage there. Um, not only can, can we look at data, but we can construct any of those panels and um, new and interesting combinations. Okay, And then also the, the widgets themselves have some, I would, I would say, some, some pretty good standards for how they've been built that, that we're going to take a look at you know, in terms of settings and the ability to customize them. So um, organizations can get really the data that they need and they have ways to expand the system um, to, to get new forms of information on the need. Um, another thing that's kind of key to Able Organizer is the dynamic form builder. Anytime we're looking to collect information about contacts, maybe where we have to create an activity after it's been submitted, we have this dynamic form builder. It's drag and drop. And it can be automatically associated with content. And you can, can swap forms in and out. Really what this means is that, let's say you had four donation pages um, in your site. You could have four different forms to ask for information from people. Um, really this means you have the ability to tailor your, your asks to appeal to the audiences that, that you're seeking to reach. Um, this is true for, for all of the features that, uh, that are part of the system. Um, we also have these configurable contact matching rules. They're called matching engines. Um, what a matching engine is really there to do is allow you to find duplicate contacts within your database and also within external databases, you know, typically via, via web services. But a matching engine will allow you to modify a contact record when, when somebody's coming in. Let's say there's a contact record from Mike Haggerty and Abe Organizer has been able to identify that uh, that's a match to a form that's being submitted. Um, I could also use that to like reach out to the yellow pages and pull information off there, look at my Facebook account, you know, um, and grab, grab the latest you know, few tweets and automatically inject those into uh, that contact record. So um, matching engines are kind of a powerful tool and, and, and something I'm going to spend a minute or two on as we, as we go through here. Um, and then finally, just integration with solar, commerce, ruse, uh, sorry, rules, views, panels, token, and other popular modules. Um, we really sweated the details when it comes to integrating with uh, Drupal. What we wanted to do is make sure that there was a really clear way to um, use the system. You don't need to know anything besides Drupal in order to develop an able organizer. Uh, if you want to build a feature, you can use the features module, you know, and, and just export a lot of things. Um, it's it's pretty easy to to see how this works with 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 the rest of Drupal. Next slide, please. Okay. So what we're going to do is take a look under the hood. Um, uh, Stephanie, if you could transfer control over to me, I would appreciate. It's all there yours, Michael. Okay, that looks good. Um, and by the way, uh, this is an this is a play and this is a, a play in three acts. I'm I'm going to stop a couple of times if you want to ask questions about some of the things that you're seeing. Um, you know, please uh, please feel free. So, what you see on my screen is a default installation of Able Organizer. 
this is what you get if you run the, the installation profile. I'll go over here um, to this other tab just to show you what like a donation page would look like. Okay. Uh, one of the things the donation module, the donation feature allows you to do is create as many donation pages as you might want. So I can fill out a form, uh, we'll say Michael Haggerty, put in some of my info. What you see down here is uh, Drupal Commerce default payment processor. It's operating in test mode. Um, normally, like in a live site, this would be replaced with a uh, credit card processing form. So I'll hit submit. I'm taken to a nice thank you page. Okay. If I go to the dashboard for Able Organizer, I'll see that my activity feed is updated. There's um, hey, a record Mike. of the... Uh, Mike, just to interrupt for one second. Uh, um, the screen isn't moving. It's just kind of staying on your home, on the home page. Ah, there, there it just went to that... donate. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it just went <laughs> to donate. Thank you. Okay, cool. I get on, I get on a roll and then <laughs> I just completely ignore the people around me. I'm, I'm so embarrassed. No, no, um, no. Just wanted to, it sounded like you were walking through something and that, but the screen wasn't moving. So just wanted to make sure everybody was with you. Thanks. I appreciate the heads up. Thank you so much. You bet. Uh, let's, uh, let's try that again. Okay. So what you see on my screen <laughs> is a default installation of Able Organizer. Okay. It comes with a lot of sample content, which includes things like the online donation page that you see. Okay. Um, I filled out this form while you weren't looking, okay, uh, with some of my information so that I could um, demonstrate how contact information is captured and, and where it goes. When I hit submit on this form, okay, what's what's happening is the donation is being processed. Okay. Where it says payment form down at the bottom, that's Drupal Commerce. Okay, we're using the uh, default commerce um, example payment processor there. Normally that the fields were you know under payment form would be replaced with a, a credit card processing form. When I go to my dashboard enable organizer, what I'm going to see is you know in this activity feed um, information about the, the donation that, that I've just made. If I was to go to my contact screen and look at the record from Michael Haggerty. What I would say also is that you know that activity is reflected there um, as well. I know we're covering a lot of ground really quickly, so let me take a couple steps back and 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 let's just focus on on the front end for a moment. Um, donation pages are content type. Okay, you can create those from within the system. You can have as many donation pages as you want. Uh, we've integrated with the media module as part of the Able Organizer distribution. So it's really easy to integrate images and video and, and other items here. Um, we have a couple of tools for mobile development that are integrated into the distribution as well. It's pretty easy to deploy like adaptive images, adaptive videos, and, and other items that will you know, resize to the uh, dimensions of the device that are, are being used to, to view it. When I hit edit, okay, we're really talking about standard Drupal content types with the exception of, uh, of a couple of things. The first is this CRM core menu. Okay, this is built specifically for CRM coordination. Um, each time we receive a donation, we're going to generate an email message that will, will go out to users. Uh, that email message is defined in a rule. Um, it's being sent via, via mail handle. Um, so we can send rich HTML texts um, to people. It supports tokens um, in the, the body of the uh, email messages. This allows you to send highly personalized responder emails Okay, every time a donation is received. Um, the select box that you see here, I only have one um, thank you message configured for donations. I can configure more. Um, on a per page basis, we can select the responder that's going to be used to send messages out. We also have recommended donation amounts. One of the things I'm going to show off here in a minute is just how carts work. Um, if we have a shopping cart that's set up for Able Organizer, 
let's say uh, we wanted to allow someone to pick from uh, you know one of five recommended donation levels. We can set those those donation amounts here. Okay. When I go into the donation form itself, okay, we're seeing a little display that allows us to choose what form we're actually going to associate with this page. I could have four or five different donation forms in my site. The form is not the same as the page, meaning that um, I can create my form someplace else, and we'll take a look at the form builder in a minute, but I can ask for different information in each situation and, and, and ask for the, the information that's appropriate for what I need. One of the things that savvy uh, digital campaign managers know is that it's always a bad idea to ask for more information than what you need because that will drive a certain percentage of your audience away. Um, at the same time, you always want to capture uh, certain minimum amounts of information. It's never a good situation to have less than what you need. And so really this is a tool that makes it very easy for people to ask for the right information when they need it and to tailor those asks. If you find your donation forms are underperforming, perhaps the issue is with the fields that are there. Um, you can change that in like two minutes with Able Organizer. Um, we have this box for displaying the form in line with other content. All of the examples in Able Organizer do not do this. But if we wanted to, we could attach the, the forms themselves with, with content that's there. Um, and then finally, we can control the label that, that appears. Um, I'll just go back to, to the page. And you know, this, this is the, the label that I'm talking about. You know, if we want to really tailor those asks okay, and, and, and give people actions that we're telling them to do you know, within a page, uh, we, can, we can do that here pretty easily. So, um, that is the basics of content management with Able Organizer. We're adding forms to content in the right places. Each one of our features comes with its own content type. You know, there's an event um, content type, a petition content type, etc. You can add whatever fields you want onto them. You can integrate with the media module in order to inject nice things like online video and images and other stuff. And more importantly, you can really tailor the kind of information you ask for from people in order to ask for the right information at the right time. Whenever we collect data about people, it's stored in CRM core. Okay? And on the tab I just switched to, what you're looking at is, is what the back end looks like around CRM core. Um, one thing that is really important to kind of kind of be aware of when you're looking at something like this is uh, this is not the back end of your website. Okay, in Drupal usually you have a front end and you have um, a back end, you know, like the administration section. Um, with CRM Core, one of the things we're really conscious about is the fact that CRM is kind of like a, a DMZ between admin and, and the front end. You know, it, it has its own UI challenges. Uh, we built a unique theme just for handling the, the CRM section. You're going to need to be able to place tools, blocks, and other information in, in, in places that don't belong in the front and they don't belong in the administrative section. So um, we've got the UI support to allow people to really customize the, um, uh, sorry, the interface for, for managing contacts. Um, this is the dashboard, okay? By default, this is what you'd get when you work with Able Organizer. To the left, you'll see a nice long activity feed with all the actions that have been going on in the site. Um, this lists 50 items at a time. Um, we've turned on infinite scroll with this in the past. It's not in the distro. Um, but, uh, you know, it's perfectly fine if you want to have the ability to scroll back, you know, until the end of time for, for your site, until the beginning of time for your site. Um, over on the right, we have a set of quick links to allow us to create content, um, to manage profiles, to record new activities and other information. And we also have some basic summary info about the features that are configured for your site. For 
this website, we've had a total of 47 donations. We've received $5,350, and the average amount of a donation is $113. Um, it's good. <laughs> Most nonprofits would be happy with the average donation amounts. Um, I think many of them would like to up the donations. But uh, really the point is you can get to that information very quickly using, using the dashboard. The dashboard is also a panel. Like I said, Able Organizer ships with about, it's about 130 different widgets that can be displayed within panels. And I'll just poke real quick. I'm proud of the fact we built so many of these things. Um, each of the items that um, you see is also used in reports, which we're going to get into in a minute. Um, if we found that information about petitions was the top line item for this site, that's why it's being built. We could take widgets out of reports and put them into the dashboard in order to make it really easy to, to get at that information and, and, and draw people into to just the correct stuff that's there. So um, as we go through CRM core event and donations, you'll see that there's a, a bunch of others there. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about our, our widgets here in, in just a minute. Um, so the dashboard is kind of a hub, okay, when, when you get into the CRM section for Frable Organizer. We also have our contacts page. Uh, this gives us a rundown of the contacts that are in the site. Um, one of the things I guess I just wanted to, to emphasize here is this is a view. We have views bulk operations associated with, uh, with our contact lookup screens. Um, we can delete contacts, we can join them into households, we can merge them, we can do mass edits. If I wanted to change everybody's last name to Haggerty so they're cool like me, um, that's, that, that's not really tough. We can also send email messages. Um, we have the ability to send emails through Constant Contact, MailChimp, um, we can use Madril for SMTP support. Um, there's also the SMTP module if we just want to push messages um, through through another uh, 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 server. So it's pretty easy to communicate with your contacts just using this screen. Since this screen is a view, um, we're able to clone it. We can create multiple views of contacts. If we wanted a way to just look at individuals and then a way to just look at organizations, um, it's pretty easy to do that as well. Um, let's also talk about reports real quick and just you know, in terms of an overview. Um, all the reports that ship with the system are set up to be templates. Okay, they, they give a lot of useful information, but at the same time, um, you're able to clone them, you're able to customize them. Um, there's a lot of different widgets that uh, specifically can be customized. Um, it's about 30 reports, actually, that, that, that ship with it. I know these lists look a little small. Um, reports are organized by you know, the kind of subject matter. So donation reports are up here. Donor reports are right here. They both come out of the donation module, but um, we have a, a small API around how reports are defined and um, uh, different features can uh, define different types of reports where they need. So just to give you a sense of what some of our reports look like, um, we've got some decent visualization options. Um, you're going to see a lot of pie charts, you're going to see a lot of line graphs, and you're going to see a lot of bar charts. Um, each one is a widget, like I said. You can configure what data is going to appear um, as you go through it. Let me just jump back here. One of the things that people actually always get excited about when I do a demo of Able Organizer is when I just move around pie charts and line charts. Um, I've been sitting on calls where people are just like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Um, it demonstrates a design principle that has gone into the system. Really, we think that the strongest organizations that, that we've ever worked with you know, here at Trellin are ones that, that are data informed. They don't like canned reports. They like metrics that are streamlined um, to the kind of organization they run, um, where people can interact with them and customize them. 
in, in the manner they choose, and where the metrics themselves sort of reflect their brand. Um, some of the organizations that, that do the best, okay, where, where we've achieved the best outcomes with them as partners, um, have been the ones that, that have really been able to get strong actual intelligence and share it in real time with, uh, with their groups. And our, our reports have been built to reflect that. Okay. Hey, Mike. Uh, yeah. Um, we had a question. Um, is there a default way to segment content contacts based on specific criteria and store them as groups? Great question. Um, in order to segment contacts, you want to configure the system a little bit. We didn't put a default in place. The reason is that we didn't want to force people to do things one way or another. Um, CRM Core integrates with organic groups for people who are looking to do that. Um, you know, we, we could certainly store contacts that way and associate them. Um, what I'm really fond of is the idea of tagging contacts, um, creating a simple taxonomy where people can um, organically build up their own uh, groups of contacts and um, and do it collectively. So really the segmentation options that are supported are, are those that are there for uh, content you know within within Drupal. We don't really draw a line nor do we try to impose a single way of, of organizing those on on people using the system. Any other questions, or I guess I just wanted to make my yeah. Oh. So um, so let's see. Um, I think this. I don't know. That, uh, let me just see here. Um, Able organizer looks very promising to some groups I work with. Um, however, these groups have annual memberships that need to be managed with a yearly calendar. Does sure. Able Organizer have a default membership type of setup, i.e. active member versus lapsed or potential? Sure. Um, we have not built a membership feature for Able Organizer. Um, there's a reason for that. Uh, number one, lots of different groups have lots of different membership requirements, and we haven't tried to, to tackle that. You know, by the time we finished building it, um, there's some segment that is not going to want to work with it, you know, period, just because it doesn't match their exact membership workflow. And membership is essential to the lifeblood of associations and membership organizations. Um, but number two, there is support for membership. When we go into the administrative section of CRM Core, we can build an activity type um, for membership where we capture the appropriate information um, tie it to an activity record that gets associated with contacts. We can use CRM Core Profile to build the forms that allow people you know, to actually register. And we can use our reporting tools um, to allow us to, to generate really strong reports around it. We can also use rules in order to handle the uh, details around like grace periods and sign-up periods and um, end of membership periods. Um, to make sure you're communicating with members and building the kind of community that you want. So um, the answer is it's there, but it's not there. Okay. Um, after Trellon has a new website coming out, and once our new website is launched, I'm, I'm actually writing a series of blog posts about this. Um, really, just focused on how you configure membership with Enable Organizer. Just because it's not a feature doesn't mean you can't build it yourself. Um, and you can build it yourself probably in an afternoon, you know, if, if, if you follow what I lay out. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but um, ho hopefully it does. Great, Mike. That's great. Um, uh, another question. Um, what would be involved in changing the term donations to payments within the system? That's not too hard. Um, what you'd want to do is go under... Sorry, your CRM core menu, go into activity types, okay, where it says donation. What did we want to change it to? Payments. 
Yeah. So we would change it to payments here. Okay. Um, anytime someone is creating a donation record that's now renamed payments, you know, now that would be captured that way. When we look at our actual reports, all of our reports are really built around views. And we have these panels. We, we could change payments for um, each one of these widgets as well. It's the sort of thing that might take about an hour, but you can, you can replace everything manually that way. Um, we haven't attempted to, like, localize specific strings. Um, I imagine that you could also use the localize module, or the locale module, sorry, um, in order to, to accomplish the same thing. I, I just worry about whether or not it would, would really work in all, all cases. Okay, great. And then uh, one other question. Are contacts nodes? Contacts are not nodes. Contacts are their own entity defined in uh, CRM core. What you're going to find is that a lot of the hooks that exist around nodes would just be inappropriate in managing contacts. There's a whole other event model that's there. If you go to drupal.org, and go to the CRM core project, you're going to find there's extensive documentation around the data model, what entities are there, what modules are there. And um, I, I wrote most of it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of loquacious. So um, I think you'll find that, that, that there's good documentation, and, and, and you can certainly reach out to me if, you know, later if you want to talk about that in detail. Great, great. Um, that is all we have for questions. Um, Mike, do you, uh, are you um, complete with your demo? Should we? Um... Why, don't, why don't you give me two or three minutes oh, to wrap up it. here? Absolutely. And yep. then we'll, we'll dive in. Those were, those were great questions, and you know, I appreciate that, and thanks, everybody. But um, really, I was kind of getting to the meat of this. Um, and you know, I apologize if I was a little focused on some of the nuances about you know our reports and our charts and everything, but I did want to just deal with the subject of data for a minute. Um, like I said, uh, data-driven organizations are you know are one thing, but data-informed organizations um, are are another. You know, when when you work for a group that makes decisions based around analytics, you can either listen to the analytics um, and and just kind of slavishly do what they say, um, or you can Kind of permit people in your group some creativity and freedom of expression, and use metrics as a way of just informing ongoing decisions about what you do. And able organizers really built to fall into that second camp. I just want to talk a little bit about the the kinds of intelligence you can get out of the system just by looking at some of our donation reports for a moment. Um, every piece of data that we collect in able organizer is tied to a source. Um, there's sources for uh, all the different features that we've talked about here today. If we were to take a look at the sources that um, we have configured for this site, we'd see fundraisers are really the most popular source that, that we have. These are the kinds of appeals you'd really want to focus on with your audience. Um, I'm on a source history page. This shows me, you know, since the beginning of time, what donations we've received for this source. It shows me also that people who make donations through this source really only like to give one time, and that's it. So we don't really need to focus on sending them a lot of emails and stuff. They're once they've given once, they're they're kind of done. Um, we know that people who give to this source like to give between 100 and 250 dollars. If I'm sending an email to people, maybe what I want to do is say, "Look, um, can you contribute 200 dollars now?" Since that's really the most popular kind of donation to receive here. And then finally, I know that people who do give to this source also like to give to walk-ups, annual appeals, and online donation campaigns. So if I wanted to send an email to people, <laughs> okay, maybe what I want to do, instead of asking them to donate to my fundraiser, is to ask them to get involved in a walk-up or annual appeal, because that's, that's kind of a popular avenue, you know, for folks who, who are getting involved. Um, we also have our online donation pages. Um, this is a special kind of source. Uh, donation pages exist in the site. They're not really meant for 
use as um, uh, 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 sorry for um, capturing other activity. Okay, you, you really just want to use these for interacting with users on your site. If I go down into the list of pages, okay, of donation pages that exist, I see that my fundraiser page is the most popular. And if I was to go into that, whoops, sorry, to the summary report for that, what I would see is that people like to give on Saturdays to this source and also that the highest dollar totals that we've received is on Mondays. I also see that people like to give at around 5 o'clock in the morning, okay, based on these metrics. Um, it's a good idea to send emails on Sunday night around midnight so they'll be in people's inbox first thing in the morning um, based on these metrics. Um, a data-informed organization sits down, reads through all of that stuff, and is able to get actionable intelligence quickly. Um, the level that these reports are generated at is, is is not really at the level of, you know, a chief information officer or a chief financial officer who's looking to, to maximize yields, you know, although they could be, okay? These reports are really written for the team that's running a campaign and has, you know, found themselves two weeks into it and, you know, they've collected 75% of what they're after. Um, you have real quick ways to get actionable intelligence about what you're doing and, and kind of work with it. Um, there's a lot of other things under the hood. Um, I could go on and on and on, um, but I did promise Stephanie that I was going to wrap up here soon. So um, <laughs> with that, uh, I guess if we could just go back to the slides, I just want to point everybody at where you can go to find out more information. Just one second, and we will get back here. We have a few more questions, too, for you, Mike. Sure. Um, so let's have you finish, and then I'll ask the questions. How about that? I think it sounds, I think it sounds perfect. Okay. Um, let me just tap here. Um, so there's some facts about Able Organizer, um, just interesting things to chew on. Um, this is available now as a distribution from Drupal.org. Um, we released the beta 1 version in November. Um, in early March, we'll be releasing beta 2. Um, some of the new features that are going into it are, are listed here. We've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of groups. Um, one of the major things is moving the base theme uh, to Zen um, so that there'll be better SaaS support. You're going to see that uh, the current themes are written in Omega. We'll be switching those over, um, but continuing to maintain the Omega themes as well. Um, we have a slew of new reports and widgets. Um, you're going to find open layers is involved there. Um, you're going to find there's a number of JavaScript li or jQuery libraries that are used for social network analysis that are, are starting to come in. Um, and there's also some improved uh, mobile support that's going to be part of beta 2. Next slide. Um, if you'd like to find out more about Able Organizer, um, here's a, a few useful things. Um, first off, uh, ableorganizer.org does exist. Um, that's actually the, the site that you've just seen. I've had a lot of people signing up on, in forums and everything, and I'm collecting some interesting intelligence about who's out there. Um, we're converting that over to community site right after beta 2 launches. So um, just, just keep your eye on that space. Um, on Twitter, Able Organizer, um, we do po uh, uh, publish frequently um, there, so you can find out about news and announcements and also communicate with um, the maintainers of the system uh, that way. Also, the project on Drupal.org is uh, uh, just called Able Organizer. That's where you can go to download it. Next slide. OK, uh, big red question marks means time for questions. Let's, <laughs> let's dig in. All right. So um, how easy is it to add CRM core to an existing site? Uh, you install it the same way you would any other module. There's there's nothing really special about it. Okay, great. There's also complete installation instructions um, that exist in the documentation. I, I encourage folks to read that and 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 feel free to get in touch with us if if you're confused. Okay, great. And are there any simple integration uh, for individuals in the organization to build their own donation pages or drives? 
Yeah, so personalized donation pages, I think, is what we're asking about. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not too tough, okay, to give members in your organization the ability to create their own donation pages and edit their own donation pages. You do that just through, um, I'm sorry, you do that just through through Drupal's user um, uh, interface or user, user permission system. Uh, with personal donation campaigns, usually there's two things that are also kind of important. Um, you know, the first is to, to have some metrics and analytics around what you've, um, you've collected personally. And then secondly, um, the ability to you know, have personalized responses, like you know, a really nice thank you page or, or, or something else. So um, I guess my answer there is it's not hard. Um, it's also not trivial. So um, that's probably worth sharing some knowledge about, you know, through through some blog posts. And, and uh, if anyone wants to reach out to me, you know, at, at Trellon.com, I'm, I'm happy to follow up on that and, and uh, talk talk it through with you at least. It's uh, it, it's it's not it's not terribly hard. I'll put it that way. Okay, great. Um, out of the box, how does one customize the front page? Um, this um, uh, attendee found it difficult at first stab. Oh, got it. So the front page is blocks. You can turn those blocks off anytime you want just by going to like admin structure blocks. Um, that'll allow you to shut off all of the blocks that are there. Okay, the the theme that's being used, you're you're not forced to use that theme. That's our attempt to make it a little prettier um, than like Garland. Um, you, you can turn that off as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And how does uh, Able Organizer integrate with MailChimp and Constant Contact? Is it a true integration or an export-import capability? Um, really good questions. Um, those modules I didn't personally work on, so I just don't know the answer. Um, it's something that that I, I I think we could could dive into at you know at some point but um, mm -hmm. re reach reach out to me about it offline if you'd like to if you'd like to chat about it perfect perfect and um, also um, for an existing site can the complete able organizer be installed or does it need to be installed in increments via installing individual modules and painstakingly configuring each one to match the total config for the Able Organizer release. Mm, okay, I don't like words like painstaking. <laughs> um, so I think that's a loaded question. Now, uh, I'm not going to say it's pain-free. However, um, to install into an existing site, you would need to get your CRM core modules and their dependencies. Um, you'd also need to get CRM core profile. You would also need to get you know, donation or event or reg uh, sorry, volunteer or petition. And, and, and turn those on. Um, in terms of actual configuration, okay, there, there's really only five configuration steps that are needed. Um, you need to set up your matching engines. Um, you need to set up your payment processors if, if they're not already. Um, and uh, mail system or, or mail handler would need to get set up. Um, there might be two other steps, but that's probably, if you have an elaborate site already, um, you probably have these things in place as well. So um, I, I wouldn't call that painstaking now. <laughs> okay. Great, Mike. Well, that is, uh, that's it for questions. Um, sure. And uh, yeah, is there any final words you'd like to say before we close out? Yeah, just thank you, thank you to those of you who came to listen. Um, I appreciate your, your attention. Um, like I said at the start of this, my hope was that I could kind of move the dial in terms of thinking about what Drupal is capable of doing. Um, I don't really think of Drupal as a content management system anymore. I think of it as an anything management system, and uh, this, this distro is really an attempt to get there. So to you know, kind of my peers in, in the community, it's uh, take, take a look and let me know what you're thinking. I'd love to, to hear your thoughts.
Wonderful. Well, Mike, thank you so much. This was really informative and um, for everyone on the call, thanks for um, for joining us. And um, it sounds like Mike is very available if you want to reach out to him and um, ask more questions, uh, more in-depth questions. Um, coming up, uh, just to reiterate again, uh, we have DrupalCon Austin, uh, June 2nd through the 6th. Uh, we have our Global Training Days uh, first of the year, um, February 28th. Uh, and our next webinar will be How to Grow Community and Your Training Business with Global Training Days. 